Hi hey friends, welcome again. My name is Raj Kumar, and in today's video, we are going to discuss about EC2. So, uh, EC2 is a service by Amazon which uh, helps you to launch virtual machines in Amazon's uh, data centers. And uh, uh, EC2 is actually abbreviated as uh, uh, Elastic Cloud Compute. So you can uh, you, uh, you can launch your uh, instances. You can call them servers or virtual machines using the service. So without wasting time, I'll directly go to the uh, go to the AWS console and we'll try to l access the service. So once you log in on AWS, you you get the home page like this, and you can uh, you can search for the services here. So I'll select EC2. I'll write EC2, just put enter and it should show me the services. What? Okay, here it is. EC2. <coughs> and uh, here I get the dashboard of EC2, so it shows me how many instances are presently running and a few more things, so we'll discuss them one by one. So I'll simply go and we'll click on launch instance. Once I click on launch instance, I am being asked uh, to choose an uh, AMI, which is Amazon Machine Image. So what is an AMI? Now AMI is nothing but uh, it's like a template or you can say it's like an image which you will be using to launch your machines. And by the way, why do we require these templates and AMIs? For example, uh, uh, you have your own standards in your organization like uh, what should be the partitions created, which file system you are supposed to use on them, uh, what minimum softwares the machine should be ready with, how many users uh, should be created, what should be the root password, what should be the other uh, things, right? So you, whenever you create a machine, you actually, uh, you, you first create a template or in terms of Amazon, we, we call it a AMI. So whatever settings you require as per your company standards, you make all those settings there in that one machine and then you convert that machine as an AMI and rest all the machines going forward you will be creating, you will be using this AMI to create those machines. So the only purpose is you, you have not to repeat the steps uh, while creating every new machine. I hope you you understand this. So uh, another way you can uh, you can relate this with a VMware template. So in VMware also when we have to launch new machines, we we first prepare a template and all the new machines we create from that template. So this AMI can be uh, can be related with that VMware template. So by default, Amazon has created some Am uh, some uh, AMIs and you can select one of them. Uh, for me. Uh, I'm familiar with Red Hat, so I'll select Red Hat here. And then you are asked to uh, select the instance family and the type of instance. So instance family is something uh, something that uh, that depends on your application type. So for example, my applications, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to launch a general purpose application or uh, my application is going to be, a, uh, my applic application is going to be um, high CPU intensive or uh, uh, it is going to consume very high memory. So on the basis of your application's nature, uh, they have uh, they have uh, distinguished various family families uh, uh, on the basis of uh, uses of uh, uses of the instances. And then each family is further categorized in in uh, uh, in type uh, on the basis of configurations like. Uh, this machine, which is T2.nano, this is going to have one virtual CPU and 500 MB of RAM. Similarly, uh, if you go with T2.micro, which is the only only uh, EC2 machine which is available in free tier, and you can use it 750 hours in a month. Okay, so we are going to use T2.micro, which is going to provide you one virtual CPU and one GB of RAM, and we'll move ahead. Now. You can launch multiple instances uh, at a time. So I am selecting one here because I am going to launch one machine. If you want more, you can simply increase the number of instances here and all the machines will be launched at, at, at one go. And then there are options uh, uh, like purchasing option. So it is asking you to select if you want uh, a spot instance. 
So uh, before we move ahead, we should understand what are the other purchase options of EC2. So uh, the, the, the one or the basic one you can call is uh, on demand. So on demand is something like the machine I'm going to launch here in front of you, this is going to be on demand. So I'm in need of a machine, I'll simply go and we'll launch a machine. So on demand actually has a fixed price. For example, uh, uh, for example, uh, for a X family and X type of uh, uh, instance, it, it is uh, the price for this is 10 cents per hour. So the amount is going to be fixed. If I use the machine for, for 10 hours, I need to pay 100 cents for, for that machine. So this is on demand. Next is reserved. So uh, reserved uh, machines are actually, it's like a contract between you and Amazon that you are going to use this much of capacity of EC2 instance or this, these many numbers of EC2 instances for next one year or for next three years. And you get a huge discount out of the, out of the uh, cost if you go with reserved. But yes, it is an agreement for either one year or three years. Right, so you are actually reserving the capacity in uh, capacity of EC2 instances in AWS data centers. Next is spot. So spot instances is um, so Amazon sets a bid price for you. They say like, okay, uh, I'm going to sell my EC2 machines for five cents per hour, and if somebody is really interested to purchase them, they can bid a higher price uh, than their bid price. So if you 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 uh, you specify as uh, like I'm ready to purchase the machines for six cents per hour you will get the machines launched in your uh, in your account but if someday somebody else bids uh, a higher uh, price or Amazon changes its bid price to a higher value then automatically your machines will be terminated so on the basis of your application and the use case you need to you need to choose whether you should go with spot or not because you cannot run your critical applications on spot instances because you you never know when the machines are going to be terminated right and next is dedicated host so dedic um, as you are aware like aws is using a shared pool of configurable resource resources so you uh, basically uh, the virtual machines we are creating they are they are being launched on some hardware in the Amazon's data center and if you if you put a condition there that the machines or the hardware which is being used for my virtual machines it should not be shared by any other customers of AWS you can go with this option which is called dedicated host so the machines which uh, the the virtual machines or you can say the EC2 instances which are using the hardware that hardware will not be shared by any other customer but they will be that hardware will be dedicatedly used for your EC2 instances only so this option is there but again you have to pay extra if you go with dedicated hosts right so price wise if you compare uh, you get uh, the cheapest one as spot instance then uh, you'll get reserved as uh, a bit costlier and then on demand and the dedicated host is the costliest one so here i'll if i don't select this uh, uh, request spot instance by default i'll be using the on demand instance next is network so uh, you have you have to select a vpc here and by default with your account you get a vpc created so if you don't have any other network available or any other vpc created uh, in your account you can go with the default vpc in the vpc you will have subnets so you can sell you can go with uh, the the preferred uh, uh, or here the option is no preference so automatically one vpc oh, sorry one subnet will be selected for you out of uh, <coughs> the subnets in that VPC and then there is an option to auto assign public IP so yes because without a public IP you cannot access that machine directly so we want a public IP to be assigned and the subnet by default have this uh, option enabled so if you go with uh, use subnet setting enabled and if it is enabled for that particular subnet you will get a public IP assigned for yourself otherwise you can you can directly use enable so uh, let it go with the default so use subnet setting enabled placement group placement group is something uh, uh, interesting so um, there are actually two types of placement groups one is called cluster plas placement group and one is called spread placement group so we use cluster placement group uh, 
where my application uh, actually runs with multiple instances and I want a very low latency between those instances. So you can say a low latency and a high throughput between those instances. So in that term, we, we set up a placement group and we launch our instances in that placement group. So that is called cluster placement group. <coughs> Sorry. The other uh, placement group type is spread. So here, uh, uh, in spread placement group, what you do is, um, you, you actually uh, launch your instances in this placement group when you have lesser number of instances which are there for your application and you don't want to lose all the instances uh, all the instances in uh, in that uh, in that application stack or you can say uh, in that placement group so what you do you spread the instances uh, among among the hardware which is actually shared between multiple availability zones so uh, uh, in short you can say that your virtual machines are actually spread over multiple hardware which is then distributed between multiple availability zones so th the risk of uh, losing your instances is is lower so simultaneously you will not lose all the instances but yes if one of the hardware goes down then the virtual machines related to that hardware only those machines will be impacted so as of now i have not created any placement group and we are not l launching this instance in that placement group so i'll i'll uh, i'll leave that option as it is im role so im is another service in aws which helps for identity and access management and here in that in this case uh, like im can be used uh, uh, between two two different aws services so that without human intervention both the services can interact with each other and you can set up authorization between these two services like the the ec2 the logs on ec2 machine they can be uh, they can be uh, created in a s3 bucket so so, so you, you are setting up uh, some kind of authentication mechanism between two services using a role. So as of now, we don't have any role, so I'm not going to attach a role with this EC2 instance. Next option is, <coughs> sorry, next option is shutdown behavior. So when I click the shutdown button, what exactly should happen with the instance? So there are two options, stop and terminate. So I want uh, that whenever I click on the shutdown button, the machine should be stopped rather than terminating, so yes. Enable termination protection. So when you check this box, uh, AWS ensures that you don't terminate a machine accidentally. So even if you go and terminate the machine, it will ask you to first go to the ins instance settings and uncheck this button. Uh, I mean, uh, um, remove this this option from there that you you want this termination protection, accidental termination protection, and then then only you can terminate that machine. Next, monitoring. So as you know, by default, there are two types of monitoring available in uh, AWS. One is called basic monitoring and one is called detailed monitoring. In basic monitoring, uh, so basic monitoring is by default and CloudWatch uh, pulls for the services in every five minutes and it is totally free of cost. The detailed monitoring is not free, it is chargeable and it pulls the AWS services in every one minute to get the uh, stats. So I'll, I'll not enable detailed monitoring, we'll go with the default, which is basic. Tenancy, so yes, uh, uh, like you, uh, the, uh, the physical machines, the physical hardware on which your virtual machines are running, you want those physical machines to be shared with other AWS customers or you want them to be dedicated for your virtual machines. So if you, by default it is shared, <coughs> but if you go with dedicated, they are going to be chargeable for you. So I'll go with the shared one. T2 Unlimited. Now T2 Unlimited is something uh, available for uh, T2 family instances only. And uh, sometimes what happens is your applications requires more CPU. And uh, they, there are some CPU spikes at some point of time in the day. So T2 Unlimited is a feature which actually bursts m more CPU credits for you. So in case when the application requires more CPU, then by automatically the, the, the applications will get more CPU burst. <coughs> so you need not to worry about the, the CPU hikes uh, from, performance point, from performance point of view in the applications. And next we go to the advanced details. 
So this is something like uh, the post installation script option available in kickstart installation in Linux. Uh, here we can, we can uh, specify the commands or a script kind of thing uh, which will run when the instance launches. So uh, once the instance is, uh, is launched by default or automatically this, these commands uh, uh, will run in the instance. You need not to log in first and then you have to run, it, run them. So the first line we write is a shebang which is actually, uh, it actually uh, specifies like what interpreter I'm going to use uh, for the for the lines or the code I'm writing below. For example, I want to install httpd and then I want uh, a page to be created like this. Test page by IT brains and I want this to be written in this page which is index.html and I'll start the service system CTL start and the service name that's it add storage so by default 10 GB general purpose 2 storage is created so that is fine with us otherwise you can add more volume there Tags are required when you have multiple machines in your environment and you have to sort them out on the basis of uh, uh, function of the machine or or the environment of the machine. For example, I want to apply a tag called, uh, uh, so th there are key value pair actually, so name and I want a name to be given as web server. Another tag I can apply is environment and environment and the environment is development next security group so security group is a kind of firewall in AWS so you 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 by default have an uh, you by default get an uh, get a firewall uh, like firewall D and IP tables in Linux but this security group is uh, a firewall outside your OS right so uh, you can create a new security group uh, for example I'm giving a name called um, IT brains 16 hyphen SG so the same goes to the description and now by default the security group denies everything and we have to explicitly open the uh, open the uh, explicitly define the open rules or the allow rules you can say. So I want SSH to be accessed, I want to SSH this machine from anywhere. Similarly, if I, because I'm creating it a web server, so I want HTTP to be allowed from anywhere. Also, I want to test if the machine is being, uh, if the machine is pingable or not. So I'll also allow ICMP from anywhere. Review and launch. So I can review the settings here before I launch and then finally launch. So now, before you launch, uh, so any machine uh, you can access through two ways. One is through a username and password and another is using the SSH keys. So we, uh, we are going to use uh, the SSH keys and for that I'm going to create a new key pair. You can give a new key pair. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give a name called ITBrains16 and download key pair. Oh, it's already exists, so I'll give the name 17. Ready print 17, download key pair. So by default, it will download uh, the dot .pam key for you. I am just saving it on my desktop. Done. And launch instance. So the instance is being launched and you can see the status from view instances. Let me refresh. Okay, I'll select this pending one. There is one uh, more instance you are seeing on my screen. The name is also web server, but I terminated this uh, long ago. So I'm going to see the status of this instance, and this instance state is showing pending, which will be running shortly. Yes, it is. So now, if you see, uh, the instance has got a public IP 
and a public DNS name as well as a private IP and a private DNS name. So we can access this machine through putty. So I just require the public IP. But the problem is, the problem is putty does not support the PEM keys. Right? So what we need, we need dot .ppk keys because putty supports the dot .ppk SSH keys. And to convert that dot .pem key into dot .ppk key, we have to uh, we we have to use a tool called puttyzen. So I'll simply uh, I'll simply use puttyzen to convert dot .pem to dot ppk so this is putty key generator i'll close ssh putty for now and i'll simply load an existing key pair a private key so basically there are two keys one is private and one is public the public key is, is copied to the server directly and the private key is is uh, kept with you so we have to select all files and I'll select itbrains17.pem yes I want to save it without a passphrase so I didn't give any passphrase and save the private key are you sure you want to save this key without a passphrase to protect it yes I want to save it without a passphrase and give a name so I'll give the same name itbrains17 and it will be saved with .ppk extension saved and you can close it. So now come back to putty. And we'll use our IP address 35154. Go to SSH auth browse the PPK key you saved on your desktop. Here it is. And open. So when you open it, it will ask to permanently copy the RSA key to non-host file. You just click yes and here you get the putty connected. So specify the user as ec2-user without asking the password. You are logged in on the server. From here, you can become root also and you can do everything which you can generally do on a Linux machine. One more thing we wanted to test we created it a web server so we have to see if we can access this machine so I'll go to HTTP colon slash slash and the IP address yeah. so we have test page by IT print this is what we got in the index.html page so this is how we test it like our server is accessible over SSH as well as we can access it with uh, HTTP so this is how we launched an instance and we accessed it with both the ways SSH as well as HTTP. I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoyed the video and uh, uh, requesting you to please go subscribe the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day.